Hi, my name is Liam Leonard. And my name is Ahmed Abu Jamia. And today we are going to talk about hydrogen combustion engines and the differences it has with fuel cell processes. So what is a hydrogen combustion engine? The general premise of a hydrogen combustion engine is that it uses main, its main fuel is pressurized hydrogen. Um, and then through combustion, it creates mechanical power. And we see that it transforms chemical energy into mechanical energy. And uh, more in depth, uh, what, what does that mean for a combustion engine? A combustion engine is a heat engine where the combustion of a fuel occurs with an oxidizer, which is usually air in this case, in many cases, in a combustion chamber. That is an integral part of the working fluid flow circuit. Um, in the internal combustion engine, we see the expansion of high temperature and high pressure gases produced by combustion apply direct force on some component of the engine. Generally, this is a piston where we see in cars, um, but it can also be used for turbine blades, rotors, or a nozzle. And that force moves a component over a distance, which transforms that chemical energy into a useful mechanical energy, as we saw from the last slide. So where we can use this processes? Uh, for example, we can use them in engines for, transporta for transportation, such like any power source for land or water vehicles. Uh, for example, this would be a piston, piston engine. Uh, we can also use them in generators as well, uh, electrical and industrial power, uh, most likely used for a backup. Uh, we can also use them in turbines, such as aircraft, industrial power as well, and marine. Um, so let's go ahead and take a dive deeper into the chemical reaction of a hydrogen combustion engine. Um, we see that at the head of the combustion, it creates mechanical energy by pressing down on the piston. Um, and the heat inside the combustion chamber actually excites the oxygen and nitrogen. And that actually turns, that combines it into a form of nitrogen oxide. And generally, if we see nitrogen oxide, it's actually um, harmful to the environment and also to people. And that is the bad byproduct that comes with a hydrogen combustion engine. Um, and, but also one of the, the helpful things is, is that it doesn't have a carbon footprint, uh, as we'll see further with a fuel cell as well. So as we take a look at the diagram, uh, we can kind of see how the process of an internal combustion uh, engine kind of flows and through the steps. Uh, so the first step we see is where we have our hydrogen coming through right here. And then in that, we see that our natural compression takes place. Um, and from our compression, uh, we're actually starting to, sorry, let me go ahead and fix this real fast. We actually have our compression um, that's forcing the cylinder up. And then that's when we start igniting the combustion step. And from that combustion step, that's where we get our power that's being generated from that piston and that volume expansion that comes with that. And then furthermore, we're going to go ahead and exhaust after that process. And from that exhaust, that's where we get our NOx out. And um, that's the byproduct that we don't want to have. Um, unfortunately, there's a kind of process. Um, in the hydrogen combustion engine process, it generally has a lower efficiency, um, but it's a pretty simple uh Pretty simple integration to a regular to a regular process that you'd see in a car that has a regular combustion engine without the hydrogen aspect to it. Uh, we have a hydrogen two tank which would be stored in pressurized volume canisters that then moves to the engine. And from the previous diagram we just looked at, uh, we saw how that that operated. So that'd be going into the engine, and then from the engine we have it going into the transmission, and then from the transmission we're going to get that power transfer to the wheels uh, to actually. Uh, move the car further and we see again that we have an efficiency of 25 to 35 percent so not necessarily ideal uh, but as we look further into a fuel cell we'll see that it's a little bit different and we actually get a better efficiency uh, through the process um, so actually taking a further look into the hydrogen fuel cell reaction I'm not going to dive too deep on this but the ult ultimately we see that we're getting no carbon emission from this and we're getting no nitrogen ni nitrous nitrogen oxide which is um, very helpful for both the environment and for anyone that's around it. And so if we actually take a look at the process um, from moving on from our last process uh, that we saw in the hydrogen combustion uh, process, we see that this actually has an efficiency of 50%. Um, and we're actually mo using mostly electrical components here. And we're using just we're using our H2 to directly to a fuel cell, um, then to a power control unit, which then goes to a gear reduction. Uh, a lot different from your standard uh, heat, heat cycle like we saw with our hydrogen combustion uh, engine. All right, so now looking at a PV diagram for the ideal combustion cycle, uh, for a hydrogen combustion cycle, um, in reality, we actually have an intake stroke right here, as we saw from our moving diagram. We have an intake stroke right here and an exhaust stroke. Um, this would actually be on our, this would be replicated on our 
uh, PV diagram. And as we see, we're actually going to get a adiabatic compression uh, along here through steps. And this will be our first step right here. And this will be our second step right here. And then we'll have a third step, which will be our Q added in. And we'll have our fourth step right here. And this is going to be our power stroke. That's going to be from the combustion. So we'll have our, our power stroke right there. And then we'll also have our compression stroke, which is right in here. All right. And then we're actually going to have our Q out, which will be right through here. That'll be our Q out. And this will be our Q in. And so again, we'll take you through the process from our one to two. Uh, we actually have an intake and an exhaust before we hit our step one, and then we move to two, and then three, and then our power stroke from three to four from our combustion. So to sum this up, uh, for a combustion engine, uh, hydrogen is a good thing, but there's a misconception that motor is better. It does not. It's not better. It does not increase your efficiency. Uh, efficiency for for a combustion engine would reach to 35%. Uh, hydrogen has a very low energy density, which requires more fuel and more tank space for sure. Uh, it does not produce uh, carbon, but it does produce uh, nitrogen oxide, which is not good for the environment. On the other hand, for a fuel cell, efficiency could reach to up to 60%. Creating H2 is expensive, this is for both of them. But also for a fuel cell, we have no carbon, we have no nitrogen oxide, which is a good thing as well, but there's more components uh, for the process. Thank you very much for watching. That was Ahmed and Liam Free. Thank you.